The Eminence in Shadow, all you need to know about Delta from Anime Stats, guys. Like his videos, sub to his channels. Let's see it. Beast Girl. Delta was born and raised in a clan of wolf. The Rianthropes. That word's hard to say. Basically, Beast Girl, right? I think they, she got the possession, right? So the Isekai Cancer. And then their tribe just fucking threw her out. That's so cold. And their tribe is like purely, what's it called? Like, might makes right. It's just Unga Bunga Caveman. Like, if you're not strong enough, you will just die. She killed her brother so quickly, too. Real name? Prior to receiving the name Delta from Alpha, her real name was Sarah. I think... That's what her brother called her, right? I'm pretty sure in the sewage, her brother called her Sarah? I think so, yeah. Origins 1. Delta's clan was huge, and her father, the chief, had over a hundred children. And that's why she keeps saying, Boss, boss. You want to have a hundred children? Come on. <laughs> Origins 2. Delta's mother was one of the low-ranking mistress of the clan chief. That's fucked up. What? Delta's mom is the weakest? You would think that then Delta would also be weak, but I think maybe that caused like a like an insecurity complex, right? She's like, oh, because I'm from like a low-ranking mistress, I need to like prove myself. That's why she worked harder than anyone else and became like the strongest dog girl or the wolf girl, actually. Hunger. Due to her lower status, she received limited food and was malnourished. Bro, I guess in like a tribe, yeah, like the, the, the importance, like how important you are in the tribe determines like all the privileges. Like who gets to maybe use the toilet for, no, they don't have, they don't use toilets. They just fucking shit outside. I don't know who gets more food, who gets like better like huts and shit. That's kind of sad. Maybe this is all motivation to make her, you know, become stronger though. Hunt. Because of this harsh treatment at a young age, she learned to fend for herself by hunting in the forest. Prodigious. 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 Prodigy. One. By the age of three, she managed to slay a wild boar twice her size. Age of three? Age of three? You can do that? You think you can fight a fucking boar at the age of 30? Ain't no way that's happening, bro. Prodigy 2. By the age of 12, the only person in her clan who could best her was her father. What the fuck happened, dude? Hold up. But so she got born into low rank, right? She got discriminated on because she was weak. So they decided, you know what? I need to eat more. I'm just going to become so fucking strong that only my dad, the boss in this tribe, can beat me. So by the age of 12, she was already like number one. Okay. Okay. Well, number two, technically, right? Exiled. When Delta became afflicted by the demon possession, she was exiled from the clan. And this implies that Delta is obviously a descendant of the beast hero because only the three... Well, I'm not sure if this is true, but demon possession, mono overload, based on the previous enemy stats video, the Cult of Diablos... Remember the Aurora video? Aurora or Diablos cursed the three, the three heroes and all their descendants therefore have gets possessed, I think. She was just exiled from the clan. I wonder what age this was. Probably somewhere around 12. So they just threw this kid out. They're like, fuck you. Possessed. Oh, wait, we missed it. Disease Delta continued to hunt by herself until... Until... You gotta wait for here. See, the bar loads and then changes. Boom. The illness gradually weakened weakened her due to the point where she could no longer hunt. And then good timing. Delta was found by Sid and Alpha in a paralyzed state due to possession. This is probably shown in Master of Garden that we're, ever gonna, that we're probably not going to see from the anime. Unless they do like a Delta backstory. Instincts. As soon as Delta saw Sid and sensed his power, she instantly submitted to him. Yeah, and I think of all the girls that simp for Sid in Shadow Garden, Delta is even more pronounced because obviously she's like a, a beast girl, right? She's a dog girl. And beast girls, in usually like isekai or fantasy shows, they are the most honest, right? Their ears flicker, their tails start wagging whenever they're happy. They can't hide how they're really feeling. And in terms of raw power and 
you know, the dominance and like the, the, the power dynamics, right? It's even simpler to Beast Girl. If you're just stronger, people just kind of worship you, right? Remember Mushoku Tensei? I think uh, Linium Persona? They're like the top ranking princesses from like the Beast Clans. And as soon as Rudy just showed them up, they just submit so easily. They just call them boss. It's a, it's a trope in Isekai that I actually don't get tired of. I'm not a furry, but cute cat girls and dog girls submitting to the main character because he's stronger and adding a cute moments like that. I do enjoy it. All right. Early member. Delta is the fourth member of the Seven Shadows and the same age as Sid. So like 15. Strength and worth. Delta values strength above all else and doesn't respect weakness. Pretty much the exact same thing I just mentioned about the power dynamics within like the Beast Clan. Doesn't respect weakness is so exaggerated because in the sewer, we just straight up killed her brother, right? Because he was so weak. I didn't think that she would. I thought it would be like, a, oh, bro, you're still alive? You're working with Getan? Hold up. That's the wrong side. Here, let's work something out so you can like, we can be family again. But nah, Delta was like, fuck you. I'm going to kill you. You're weak. Trash. And Sid's like, whoa, is that your brother? <laughs> what the fuck? And Delta's like, ah, it doesn't matter. The weak just die, and we can just replace them with more kids. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this, is, this is straight up some Oonga Boonga caveman mentality going on. But hey, uh, that's what happens back in the day, man. It's straight up just um, survival of the fittest. You're, I you, you're either good or you're bad. Just get good, pretty much. Defeated. Delta once challenged Alpha to try and rise into the Shadow Garden's hierarchy, but got defeated. Ooh, did they ever show this in Master of Garden? I would like to see this fight. That's actually so fun. Familiarity. Delta calls Shadow as boss man rather than the more formal Lord Shadow. I agree. And this familiarity, you know, whenever Delta calls Shadow like bossu bossu, I think Delta is the closest to Shadow. Even though Alpha is next in command, right? She's number one if Shadow is number zero. I think if we're going in terms of who's closest to Shadow and knows his, I don't know, it's it just closest to Shadow, it's gotta be Delta. In season two, the John Smith stuff, right? Delta knew the secret. Shadow told her first. Shadow sent her on a mission, right? Delta also was eating with Shadow, right? Even though Shadow was technically feeding Delta on the side. They go hunting together. They go on dates together. They go hunt bandits together, right? And even at the end of the John Smith arc, Shadow was digging with Delta and they were talking about Santa Claus and shit. And it, it just feels like to everyone else, Shadow is a little bit too distant. But when around Delta, Shadow is pretty much Sid, isn't he? He is just Sid. Then again, it depends on like the keywords. If there's ever keywords being used, then Shadow will go into the Shadow accent. But still, I feel like Shadow is still more, uh, what's it called? Comfortable around Delta to be itself. And yes, the Demon Santa, someone was like memeing in the comments, you know, in the, in, in the end of the John Smith arc. The Demon Santa? What if that's like, I don't know, the Diablos or some shit. It's like, nah, what are you fucking talking about? Okay. Simple job. In the Shadow Garden, Delta's only duty is to fight. That's right. Delta doesn't... Delta does attend the meetings, but she just kind of sits there and does nothing. Because what do you expect a dog to do? She's just there to look cute, okay? And be really strong. Robust physique. Delta is physically gifted. Is the most physically gifted member of Shadow Garden. <laughs> I, I see what you did there, anime stats. You, 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 yeah, robust indeed. Very robust. Mighty strength. In terms of how raw destructive power Delta... Uh, is second only to the shadow. So yeah, if we're talking about pure strength, brute force, then Delta is the strongest. But we know that all different factors come into play when we do power scaling. So Alpha's technically stronger, but if it was like an arm wrestling contest, you know, I bet Delta would win. Keen senses. According to Sid, Delta's ability to smell and hear her rivals, uh, hear, and hear rivals his own. That's right. The smell played a really funny part in the John Smith arc when she immediately figured out, Wait, that's you, boss? And John Smith is like, fuck, there goes my disguise. Nicknames. Wait, 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 wait. Nicknames. Delta has been nicknamed Suicide Weapon, Gunshot, and The Tyrant. All names that are new to me. Never heard of those. 
the tyrant sounds more like uh, it should be for Oriana, right? Suicide weapon? Gunshot? Gunshot? Loud? I don't know where this is coming from. Because of her relentless and sadistic nature once she's engaged in the fight. Is this real? Is this like manga, light novel, web novel shit? Uh, I don't know. Gamma. Delta used to quarrel with Gamma because of the latter's lack of ability to fight. <laughs> so Delta's pretty much just shitting on Gamma saying, You're weak. You're fucking weak. Trash. But then Gamma could do the same thing and be like, You're illiterate. You literally cannot read. You're dumb. You have the IQ of a fucking goldfish. <laughs> but Gamma wouldn't do that because she's nice. He wouldn't do that. <laughs> Alright, Zeta. Delta dislikes Zeta and refers to her as Molly Cat. That's right. I think uh, Zeta refers to Delta as like a mutt. And then uh, they, uh, they're always bickering. It's like cat and dog rivalry or just like bickering. But I think they do like each other. Hopefully. Truth detector. Delta can tell if someone is lying or not just by licking their face. This is a JoJo's reference again. You know, by the taste of that tear, you're lying. Remember, there's a guy that licks your tear. And yeah, where was this from? I forget. There was a recent video we watched. Where there was a JoJo's reference, but apparently Delta can also do the same thing. Natural Fighter. Delta doesn't use any weapons because she prefers to fight using her claws. She is barehanded. Is it a Kagejitsu episode that we were thought on? Maybe. And finally, no magic. Delta isn't capable of casting any spells aside from simple self-strengthening through uh, mana control. No magic. Well, if we're talking about like projectile magic and shit like that, we never saw it from her. But she, I, I, I guess she is just like a melee, melee range fighter. And she just like reinforces herself, right? She probably has like a claw weapon, like tools like that. But I don't think we're ever going to see like some kind of like beam attack from her, right? But still, who cares? She goes fucking Bankai. And she's one of the coolest characters in Shadow Garden. And goddamn, after season two, I think Delta might be my favorite Shadow Garden member. I've been a big proponent of Epsilon and I'm still a big fan. But due to the amount of pure, raw fan service that Delta has been getting, and even in Kagejitsu, I swear to God, every Kagejitsu episode Delta hard carries, this girl is built different. I love her, and I think I switched. I, I, do you blame me? Do you blame me with the amount of love Delta's been getting from the author? It's not fucking fair. I still love Epsilon.